Welcome to ERA TV, where we have a little fun with the movers and shakers in the DR business. And uh, no one moves or shakes more than Tim Hawthorne. How are you, Tim? Good to see you. Good How are to you? See you. Tim is the uh, founder, the chairman, and the creative director, executive creative director and of Hawthorne. And CEO Direct. now. Ooh. Took now, a step up or down, I'm not sure which. I always but I'm, wondered I'm about back that. back as the chief executive officer. When your name is on the company and on the letterhead, right. how is it that you're not like everything? <laughs> yeah, I guess I am actually. Uh, <laughs> chief bottle watcher, as they say. <laughs> That's no, great. it's uh, for a long time I was, I was chairman and uh, decided that things were changing so much in our industry that I felt my company just needed a little bit of my old juice back. <laughs> So uh, I came back a couple of months ago as CEO, and I'm, I'm enjoying myself immensely. Now, you mentioned a lot of changes. And, and if, if, uh, if anything's constant in direct response, it's change. But, but it seemed like for the first 10 or 15 years that I was in the business until the Internet came along, it was, it was about the same, same old, same sure. old every year. Yeah. But now things are changing exponentially by the year. How they do you are. stay ahead of all that stuff? Uh, we don't. <laughs> we're constantly trying to catch up, as I think like everybody else. Uh, we're trying to catch up. We don't know where it's going to go. Um, it is uh, a time of revolution mm -hmm. in advertising in general, uh, not just for the DR guys, but for general advertisers. A lot of people, I think, uh, you know, a little bit of a, a fear going on mm -hmm. about where things are going to be in five or ten years. And a lot of people trying to figure it out, including me. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, you don't... You don't uh, it's impossible to stay up with it all. You right. know, every day, if you, even if you uh, subscribe to the technology blogs, it's just impossible to plow through all the changes and developments every day. You try and do your best. So. But doesn't that kind of reinvigorate you, though? I mean, doesn't it just it does. make you excited to come to work every day? I am I'm totally jazzed about this because um, we were involved, I think, uh, in a revolution 25 years ago with direct response television, kind of getting this uh, rebirth with the infomercial back in 1984, 85. Uh, we were pioneers back then. We, we have some pride about that. And we're looking forward to being part of the solution, which nobody knows yet, including myself, what it is. <laughs> that we think that we can be part of it. We think we can find, figure this out somehow. Yeah. So yeah, no, I'm very excited about it. Now you were part of a presentation on uh, the, the myth that kids' products don't sell. That's right. Uh, the myth being obliterated these days. Talk about that a little bit and talk about some of the insights that you could bring to that uh, area. Yeah, you know, there are some categories um, in direct response television that for years people have tried to, uh, you know, blow the walls down and prove that in fact you can sell a particular product uh, in short form or long form when in fact you can't. Right. You know, clothing as an item. <laughs> you can sell that on live TV home shopping, but it's very difficult to sell. There have been a few exceptions yeah. when it comes to short form, long form. Well, toys and children's products have always had this aura that very difficult to make work. It's a limited marketplace. Yeah, it's a marketplace that doesn't have a credit card, you know, and uh, consequently there have been a lot of failures in the category. Mm -hmm. We put together four or five people that have had successes on a regular basis over the last five or 10 years, learned some great information. Uh, it was a very lively panel. One of the things we, we, we discovered, or at least I discovered, was that these marketers really understand that they're selling to three different demographics, not just to the kid and the mom, but also to grandma. Oh, okay. So you have to put your creative together thinking, keeping the child, the mother, and the grandmother in mind, which I thought was a great insight. Absolutely. And the other thing is, is that the creative is really about two things. And creative and traditional direct response has been basically a problem and then a solution. Show the problem, show how your product solves the problem. Uh, you don't do that when it comes to kids' products. When it comes to kids' products, you just want to show the fun, right. the playability of the product, and there's this other aspect which I learned about, which is an endearing quality, the, the, the emotional side of the playfulness. Right. So, um, so the playfulness and the endearing quality, if you can hit those two marks in a creative, I think you've got a good success. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So now, <laughs> those of us who have been doing this for a while understand that there are a lot of failures. You, you put stuff out there, it either does works well or it doesn't. Are there any products that you passed on that later exploded and you said, 
oh, man, I wish I would have kept on with that. Well, you know, we are, uh, we're an agency, so it isn't as if we have people coming to us. We have a lot of people coming to us and wanting to, uh, uh, for us to actually take their, their product on as a client. Right. And we turn a lot of people down simply because we just don't think it's going to work. And I haven't had one of those that I've turned down that has gone on to success. <laughs> but there definitely have been, I've seen shows in the early stages uh, where I said, no way that's going to work. And in fact, they were huge hits. And the one that, you know, I'll bring up, it's a little embarrassing, but it was Ron Popeil. I should never second guess Ron, but it was his first product back, you know, when his first long form product, of course, uh -huh. Ron in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and the early 80s was all about short form. Absolutely. And in the late 80s, uh, he got into long form. And his first one was the food dehydrator. I looked at the show and I said, no way people are going to buy this thing. Uh, you know, who's going to be wanting to dry pork or whatever it might be, you know, at least for that price. And of course it was a huge hit. So oh, yeah. yeah, nobody in this business can I have predict. one at my house, by the way. You can come over for jerky anytime. <laughs> I now love my, my jerky. Yeah. Now my wife is from Iowa, so I can get away with asking this question. Sure. All right. I know you have an LA office. That's right. And, and other offices besides your Iowa Salt office? Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City. All right. Yeah. So do you ever get the business for having an office in Iowa? As a matter of fact, we don't get business because we, we have an office in Iowa. And that's one of the reasons we have a Salt Lake City and LA office. All right. Yeah, yeah, no, we do get the business uh, in, in that sense of the word, too. And it's, we, we, we got a fun story to tell about how we got there. And, and uh, Do you have the Reader's Digest version of the story? Uh, the Reader's Digest version is, is that I was a producer, writer, director in Los Angeles. I'm a DGA director doing documentaries in, in the 70s and the 80s. And a guy in Fairfield, Iowa, wants to produce one of the first infomercials ever to go on air. He knows about me because I'm pretty well known. He invites me to come to Iowa to produce the fourth infomercial ever. I produce it. <laughs> 15 months later and $60 million, we've wow. created essentially a new industry. So uh, a lot of people don't know that Fairfield, Iowa really is, is kind of like the birthplace because it was the first major hit in terms of an infomercial back in 84, 85. What was the product? It was uh, uh, called The Millionaire Maker. Okay. And it was a no down payment, home study course, no down, how to purchase real estate with no down payment. Sure. Kind of a Carlton Sheets type of product. Wow. So. That's So terrific. yeah, so a little bit of history to why we're in Fairfield. And uh, we do love our small little town and the work ethic and the people. And we also love being able to leave <laughs> and travel. So yeah. Excellent. Well, thanks back. for joining us. We're glad you left and came to Vegas. Thanks. Yeah, it's <laughs> nice right. being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, good to see you again. And thank you for joining us on ERA TV. I'm Craig Burnett. We'll see you next time.